How many of you was listening to the words of the song? What made me think of that song real, was, 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 was sister, when Sister Criswell got up. She made a declaration. You can give me a little bit. She made a declaration that she will no longer be a slave. To what she used to be a slave to. Can anybody else make that declaration in their life? That that's no longer going to hold me what used to hold me. Hallelujah. Woo, praise the Lord. Yes. Somebody say it real loud and said, you can't hold me no more. Y'all didn't say that like they meant that, Mom Gilmore. Uh, say it again. You can't hold me. I don't know what you're talking to, but you need to tell it. You can't hold me no more. You can't hold me. You can't hold me no more. You can't hold me no more. Praise the Lord. Now, how many of you remembered uh, two Sundays ago what we talked about? Huh? What we talked about about two Sundays ago? Trauma. 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 And how many of you had, had really admitted for real? We talked about, let's face it. Let's face it. Somebody, somebody yell across the room, let's face it. We're still facing some stuff. We're going to stay in that vein. We're going to still face it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Ooh, this is a good mic. Go ahead and drop me just a hair. Praise the Lord. Come on, Father, we thank you. We give you glory and honor and praise for just being God all by yourself. We thank you for loving us enough to speak to us. Thank you for loving us enough to correct us. Thank you for loving us enough to direct us. God, we give you glory. We give you honor. So, God, as we talk today on your behalf, you have to speak, not me. So we ask you, God, to anoint us from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet. Give us clarity of speech, clarity of thought. God, intervene wherever you want to intervene. That your will be done, not ours. That no flesh ever be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. And praise God. Y'all can have a seat. Amen. Kingdom keepers, thank you much. Thank you much. Amen. Tell them again. Somebody say, let's face it. Amen. We talked about, uh, two weeks ago, we talked about trauma. And uh, some of us had made the decision to face some of that trauma that we went through in our life. But uh, because we was hiding from it or we was running away from it for one reason or another because we really didn't want to face it. But I've learned and we talked about then that there is some effects that trauma will have on our life. There's some effects that trauma will have on our life. And the one we're going to deal with, one of the effects that we're going to deal with, and we're going to deal with that today, is we're going to deal with depression. Somebody say, let's face it. You'd be surprised on who, 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 who's dealing with depression and trying to hide it. Let's go to the book of Numbers chapter 11. Thank God for all of you. Thank God for those of you who are watching on um, Facebook Live. Um, I'm trying to figure out if I should come down. Do you want to come down, lady, or you want to? You good? All right. Numbers chapter 11. Praise the Lord. Numbers chapter 11. Let me know when you have it. Now, we're going to do this and y'all can, can relax. It's a, teach, it's a good teaching. Y'all relax, relax, relax. Numbers chapter 11. I'm going to read verse 11 to 15. I'm going to come from the NIV, but I want to make sure that you have it. We may finish this today. We may finish this next week. Amen. I want to keep this in this atmosphere. Some, yell to yourself. It's time to face it. Because a lot of stuff that we don't want to face is holding us back. You got it, Numbers chapter 11? All right, you can go ahead and back the camera up just a little bit. I know I'm gorgeous. And... Yeah, you back it up some more. 
Amen. Thank you. My wife just said, bless your heart. Amen. Thank you. Numbers chapter 11. Here we go. Numbers chapter 11. You guys got it? The NIV says, and Moses asked the Lord, why have you brought this trouble on your servant? What have I done to displease you that you put the burden of all these people on me? Did I conceive all of these people? I'm coming out of the NIV. Did I give birth to them? Why do you tell me to carry them in my arms as a nurse carries an infant to the land you promised on oath to their ancestors? In other words, I ain't telling them you did. Where can I get meat for all these people? They keep welling to me, give us meat to eat. I cannot carry all these people by myself. The burden is too heavy for me. If this is how you're going to treat me, please go ahead and kill me. If I have found favor in your eyes and do not let me face my own ruin. We're going to come back to that. But when I read this, we see, we see how, first of all, He's overwhelmed. And because he's overwhelmed, it causes him to go into this state of depression. Depression can be one of the most painful and overwhelming struggles we face. Do me a favor. Do me a favor. Uh, I want you to uh, tell yourself, I'm going to be honest today. Okay. Depression can be one of the most painful and overwhelming struggles that we face. Jesus taught this though. He said, you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. See, Christ, Christ's truth, the truth of God, the truth of God extends all throughout scripture beyond eternity and into every need in every one of our life. The answer is in the book. The truth. Somebody say the answers in the book. So instead, watch this, watch this. Here we go. The word depression may be a modern term, but I have to tell you before you start looking for this word depression in the Bible, the word depression is not in the Bible. But why are you using it? I'm glad you asked. The word depression is not in the Bible, but the Bible uses words like this. Downcast. The Bible uses words like downcast. It uses words like sad, furloughing. You'll understand this word, discouraged. It uses words like downhearted. It uses words like mourning. How about this one? How about this one? Troubled. Trouble, trouble, trouble. How about this one? How about this one? Miserable. Sound familiar? See, what we read about the experiences of some of the people in the Bible, it clearly points to what we call depression. Here's some scripture references. You ready? The people that experience uh, depression. You remember Hannah? You remember Hannah in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 10? Stop bringing your Bibles, young people, your phones and a piece of paper. Here's what the first 10 says. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. Have any of you ever cried so hard while you was praying? It seemed like your answer wasn't coming, but you kept crying and weeping, weeping and crying, crying and weeping. Oh, just me? Okay. How about, you heard of Saul? Read, read 1 Samuel chapter 16 about Saul. Scripture calls it, what, an evil spirit from the Lord. <laughs> David, David, 
David endured because of his own sin, first of all. Oh, okay. See, sometimes the reason why you like you are in that state is because could it be it's your own fault? I don't know how I got in this situation. Well, maybe you need to rewind the tape of a decision you may have made. God, I ain't going to fool with y'all today. No, it's not my fault. It's, it, you, you had a choice. It is your fault. I could stay really right there. Because we all have choices. And there's one thing that my grandmama used to tell me, with every choice, there's a consequence. Whether it's a good choice or a bad choice. Okay, let me help y'all just for y'all for y'all intelligent people. For every action. Okay. <laughs> there's a reaction. Okay, let me try you. Let me try you. For every cause, there is any. Okay, all right. And for some of us, our effect is because of the actions of the cause. Ooh, okay. Some of us, how many of y'all wish, how many of y'all wish, how many of y'all wish? I better take my time. Yes, I am. How many of you wish you was in a better place than where you are right now? Just, just see a show of hands. Now, how many of you, you're not in that place because of something you did? Okay. Thank you for being honest. The rest of them weren't honest. Okay, watch this. I'm going to help them real good. Watch this. How many of y'all want to be debt free? And the reason why you ain't debt free because you was too loose with your money at first. Cause and effect. Okay, and watch this. And because now you ain't debt free and you got bills out the wazoo, you get depressed Because now you're looking on your table at the bills and the money that's coming in, and it just ain't matching. So you sit up there. I'm not. Don't they act like they act like me? And you don't want to do this periodically. Later. They act like, and you sit up there and you say to yourself, I don't know how. Come on, Bishop. And you get the Lord. Lord, huh? What, what, what do we say? Lord, if you can just get me. I just, wanted, I just wanted to bring that up because some of us act like we don't have that issue periodically of, of falling into a, I use this word, y'all don't like the word depression, a slouch. Okay. What is depression? What is depression? Job fell into depression. Elijah fell into depression. What is depression? We'll tell you what the medical term is. Pastor Hughes is going to help me if this definition is wrong. The American Psychiatric Association says depression uh, is a common and a serious medical illness that negatively affects how we feel, the way we think, and how we act. Okay, I'm going to repeat that part. It affects how we feel, the way we think, Oh, you better start having some flashbacks. And how we... Then here's the good news. It's treatable. <laughs> Baby, it's treatable. It's treatable. It's treatable. It's treatable. It's treatable. It's treatable. Depression causes feelings of sadness. Here's what my prayer is today. My prayer is that we look inside of ourselves and be honest with ourselves and catch it now. Depression causes feelings of sadness and or loss of interest in activities that you once enjoyed. I don't feel like doing that no more. I, don't, I ain't going. Let's go, let's go for a walk. Nah, I ain't going. Let's let, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Turn the lights on. No, that's okay. I like darkness. At least put the blinds up. No, no, leave my blinds alone. Okay. 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 
It causes feelings of sadness and or loss of interest in activities that you once enjoyed. It can lead to a variety of emotional and physical problems. And, and, and can decrease, can decrease uh -oh, your ability to function at work and at home. We're going to give you Bible, but we're going to give you some common sense today too. It, 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 it decreases your ability to function at home. Mama, we cooking? Nah. Um, get some cereal out of the cabinet. No, it's some oodles and noodles in there. God, Jesus. And, um, <laughs> you going to work today? No, I don't, I'm not. I just don't feel, you know, I just don't feel it. It's just, I'm tired. It's just. Mm. Every day. Not one, hey, not, not, not. Every three to week, every three, but every day. You don't answer. Here you go, here you go. Uh, you're not going to answer the phone. No, they're going to leave a message. <laughs> Let voicemail get it. We will. We'll. You know when you're running into depression when you just let your bills stack up on you? Am I in anybody's house right now? Come on, can we be honest? See, you know, let, let's stop acting like church folk right now. Let's be honest. Tell them again. Do me a favor across the room. I want you to yell in the back on your side and say, face it. Face it. Face it. Thank you. It's time to face some stuff, y'all. Let's stop acting like we okay when we ain't okay. Then we come to church and try to figure out why we can't get out of it. Yeah, it weighs. It's a weight. It's a weight, y'all. It's a weight. Oh, God. Here's what psychiatry says. Psychi and psych and psych blah, 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 blah. Psychiatry. It's, it's a neurotic or psychotic condition marked by an inability to concentrate. Mm -hmm. You have to write this down. Y'all might need to go home and study and, and start saying, wait a minute. I was acting like that yesterday. Y'all need to stop. Okay, so here's the Greek word for that word, just in case you want to make, I'm going to make sure I'm coming out of Bible for y'all. I don't want y'all to think. Um, the Greek word for depression is tapenius. It's T-A-P-E-I-N-O-U-S. Yeah, here's what it means. Lowly, cast down, brought low. 2 Corinthians 7 and 6. Go home and read it. Another word for it means no way through. No hope, despairing, 2 Corinthians 4, 8. Depression, people of God, my sisters and brothers in the Lord, is a serious emotional disorder and a significant health problem. It's a significant health problem. It's a demon! Y'all heard that before. Y'all heard that before. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. Jesus got depressed. I can prove it. <laughs> Didn't he? When he was in the garden? <laughs> when the weight of all of us was put on him? Watch this. So it's a serious emotional disorder, everybody. And, and I really pray that we take it serious. It's a significant health problem. Suicide, um, which is really a byproduct of depression, is a, is a, not the, but it's a leading cause of death. It's a leading cause of death. And this is what researchers estimate. Researchers estimate that one out of every seven people with severe depression will commit suicide. Will commit suicide. Tens of thousands of people do it every year. Every year. Every year. 
let's see who can be honest. Have any one of us in this room, if we have to be honest, ever had thoughts of, I ain't say last week, but ever had thoughts of suicide? See? See? See how real it is? See how real it is? See that again? See? Ever. The word is ever. That life got too heavy. And you said, you know what? I'm going, I ain't going to deal with all this. They, how many of y'all said this? They can have this. <laughs> See, like that. My goal is that we be, we be honest with ourselves. Right? According to a 2021, it was a survey um, compiled by a company called Faith Life. They make a software, a Christian study software called Logos. Um, they did this survey, and they said more, they, they did a, par, a, a pastoral uh, mental health report, and they compiled it, and this is what they found out. More than one in ten pastors admitted to contemplating suicide in the past year. Mm -hmm. Also, their studies show that in the past year, pastors have faced new and deepened difficulties from the spread of COVID-19 and having to move online to stop the virus spread, to increase social and political unrest. So had to deal with all of that. And then they go on to say in their report that with the majority of the churches having less than 100 congregants, many pastors have found themselves wearing numerous of hats, ranging anywhere from the role of just past pastor and preacher to the administrator and the tech team. Okay. I'm giving you this for a reason. Watch this. Approximately 35% of pastors reported feeling burned out and with 40% of pastors aged 25 to 40 saying they agree or strongly agree to feeling constantly burned out. Mm -hmm. It's nearly double for the rate at which pastors age 60 and plus. So while most pastors, 55% are fulfilled by the responsibility of giving spiritual and emotional support to their flock, many survey respondents noted how pastoral care is a mix, and I'm telling you this from experience, and I think I said this to you, pastoral care is a mix of highs and lows, with 45% finding it draining. Why did I give y'all those for pastor? Because depression is not an isolated problem. Depression is not an isolated problem. It's a worldwide problem. It doesn't care what culture you're in. It's a world, everybody is dealing with it. In your lifetime, you're going to run more than 20% risk of having major or minor depression. In your lifetime. Trauma got away. Trauma got away. And if you're a woman, the odds are higher. Y'all can shout later. Because depression strikes many more women than men. Men have a way of... See, men, we hide our depression with activities. Uh-oh. I need a pen. Y'all heard that? Men hide their depression. Here we go. Baby, ask me if I'm okay. Oh, you okay. Yeah, I'm good. I'll be back. Y'all catch it? Y'all catch it? Y'all catch it? Uh-huh. We hide it. We run from it. I'll be back. I got, I got to go run somewhere. Whew. I done stepped on some men's toes. Bishop, get up off me. I heard y'all. Okay. But it's serious. It's serious. Depression is no respect of person. It strikes the rich as well as the poor. I don't care how rich you are. As a matter of fact, 
I know a couple rich people wish they didn't have all that money. They're more depressed than anything. They may can buy what they want, but they ain't happy. Because things don't bring you happiness, y'all. I think I need to repeat that again. Things don't bring you happiness. I don't care how educated you are because it attacks the educated and the uneducated. The religious, the deeply religious, and the non-religious. It attacks every one of us. We all are susceptible. I believe, I believe uh, uh, you got uh, uh, Pastor Maxwell who works in the emergency room uh, hospital and you got Pastor Hewlett who, who, who deals with them and my wife used to deal with them. Please, the people that came through their hands, it didn't care what they did, what they didn't do. There's a lot of people that have gotten I know somebody that got about eight degrees. And thank you, and they cuckoo. And they depressed with life. Can I tell you why? Because for them, and this is why I always, okay, this is why I always tell the young as well as the old, find your vein and stick with that. Because what happens is you try to get all of these degrees and this and ain't using none of them. And what happens is you start thinking about it when you buy yourself. And you start saying, all them years, I ain't got nothing to show for. Anybody ever do that? You spent a whole lot of time in something and you ain't even doing nothing you spend the time in. Okay. It calls, I, I just want everybody to start feeling, getting real with themselves. So it deals with the, 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 the deeply religious and those who are not religious at all. So in other words, it doesn't matter. Depression doesn't depend upon what you have or, or, you have or, your, or your circumstances in life. Here's why. Depression comes from within. It comes from within. Many Christians suffer from depression. Christians. I've heard people say, how can you be a Christian? Suffer? Many Christians suffer from depression. There's some stages or forms of depression. I believe there's three, and it said one of them is reactive depression. That's when the individual is faced with a sudden bad situation like a diagnosis of an illness. And, 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 and their, their natural and their carnal reaction is to rebel against it and seek and sink into self-pity. Start feeling sorry for yourself. You get resentful. You sink into despair. Am I talking to anybody? And you start saying you can no longer face life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I hope I pronounced this right. The second, the second uh, form is uh, endogenous depression. Having an internal cause or origin is one that suddenly overwhelms a person for no apparent reason at all. Years, in go, years go by of suppressing <laughs> the resentment that you have been fed. You've been suppressing it for all this time until, it, until, until, until your nervous system can't take it longer and, uh, and it begins to throw it out, spit it back out. I believe they call it black depression. Pastor Hewlett, that's where they get that term in that dark place? Somewhat? Yes, ma'am. And here's a third one. Here's a third one. Manic. Manic depression. That's one who turns his or her resentment on themselves. And you begin to sentence yourself uh, to what is called hard labor leading to excessive good works. 
But here it is. But a failed manic may sentence him or herself uh, 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 to something called a black heel and present as a truly depressed person. And what he does becomes meaningless. What he does becomes meaningless. What she does becomes meaningless. This is because life is meaningless. Life has become meaningless. No value. Life has become meaningless. Watch this. Especially when the sole reference point is yourself. I was reading this uh, portion of this book, and here's what it says. In this book, it's called Feeling Good by Dr. David Burns. On page 35, he says this. Depression can mimic a great number of medical disorders because your mood swings often create a wide variety of puzzling physical symptoms. Did y'all catch that? Uh -huh. These include, just to name a few, <laughs> constipation, Diarrhea, pain, insomnia, or the tendency to sleep too much. I'm just tired. Fatigue, loss of sexual interest, lightheadedness, numbness, trembling. <laughs> Anybody learning anything? Depression has a direct effect upon your self-esteem. How you see yourself. How you see yourself. It affects what you think about yourself as a person as well as how you rate yourself. All right, so if I did a survey real quick and, 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 and I asked you uh, from the number of 1 to 10, how do you rate yourself? I wonder if you're honest, the numbers I'll get. How would you look at yourself? An unresolved depression causes a person to emphasize his bad traits and minimize his good traits. You're always looking out your, your, your everything you do bad. Everything you do bad. In other words, you are your, you are your worst enemy. I want somebody to think of this one, and I want you to keep this in mind. How you evaluate your thoughts about yourself and your experiences determines your emotional reaction. I'm going to repeat that. I'm going to repeat that. I'm going to repeat that. How you evaluate your thoughts. Let's say this loud. Say, how I evaluate my thoughts about myself and my experiences determines my emotional reaction. Did y'all get that? Let me help you. Because you heard me use, say, say things well, you know, how, how it said that depression is a demon and all this stuff. I need to help you out. Depression is not a sin. Depression, you guys, is not a sin. Now, now, now. It's merely a signal that something is wrong in your life. Something is wrong in your life. So if any of us have been uh, feeling depressed, that means there's a signal. So, so if, if, how many of you have had a pain in your body? Anywhere. Okay. To my understanding in the medical field, pain tells you something's wrong. So, so, so depression is a signal that something is wrong in your life because none of us got it going on. Somebody just said, yes, I do. And here's the thing. If it's not properly handled, it could lead to person. It can lead you now. It might not be a sin, but watch this. If depression is not handled properly, it can lead us into sin. It can lead us into sin. Okay, let me, let, me, let me help you. Okay, all right, you're depressed and you're feeling lonely. And um, if you don't handle it properly, because you're feeling lonely, you will start finding yourself in some precarious situations. Male and female. 
You, you'll start finding yourself. Uh, we was watching this. Was uh, yesterday we was watching a movie, and I'm trying to remember. And was it yesterday? But I can't remember when. But we was watching the movie, and it was this young girl. It, I think it was. Uh, 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 no, 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 not stranger. Uh, uh, I have this uh, 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 addiction. Uh, in, not, not NCIS. What is it? Uh, Law and Order SVU. Y'all need to stop. And they had this one girl because she was lonely. And because she was, you know, life was, and she didn't feel she had nobody, she went to this party. And she went to this party, and because she wanted to be a part of, she found herself in a precarious situation. And what ended up happening was she ended up getting raped. Because she opened up herself to uh, young men because she wanted to be, she wanted to feel part of, she wanted to feel wanted because the depression in her made her feel like she was nobody and nobody wanted her, all of that other stuff. Anybody ever felt like that? Come on, don't, don't play with me today. Don't play with me today. Don't play, don't play with me today. So if we're not careful, it can lead us into some sin. It can lead us into sin. It is hard to think right and do right when your emotions are thrown off balance by the weight of depression. Mm. Okay, but God is willing to help us, y'all. He's willing to help us. He's willing to help us. How many of y'all want to be helped? Okay, he's willing to help us. All right, well, give me some, here's some things that cause us uh, depressions. Write this down. Chemical imbalance. Chemical imbalance. Sometimes a result of an illness, childbirth, menopause, male and female, <laughs> can bring that depressed feeling because of the chemicals are just out of whack. Your chemical imbalance is out of whack. The after effect of prolonged periods of emotional or physical stress when you have had excess stress or, or for, for a long period of time. I hope this is helping you. What causes stress? What causes stress? The reaction to a major change in your life experience. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. For instance... Loss of a job, change of a job, trauma, trauma, trauma. Turn that heat down. I'm about to pass out. The loss of a loved one, bereavement. We've all been through that. Divorce. Okay. What is the root cause of depression? I found this scripture, Proverbs chapter 13, verse 12. Here's what it says. It says, hope deferred makes the heart sick. But when the desire comes, it is a tree of life. Here's what Proverbs 18 and 14 says in the New Living Translation. It says, the human spirit can endure a sick body. But who can bear it if the spirit is crushed? Have anybody, huh? Want me to repeat that? Yes, ma'am. The NIV, the, in the New Living Translation of Proverbs 18, 14 says, the human spirit can endure a sick body. But who can bear it if the spirit is crushed? Have any of us ever had a crushed spirit? Huh? Indeed, 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 indeed. You know, there's a lot of scripture. In Job, in Job chapter 6, I, I do want to give you scripture. I want you to think I'm just talking. Job chapter, Job chapter 7, verse 6 to 11, verses 6 and 11 says, here's what the writer says. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle and are spent without hope. 
says, therefore, I will not restrain my mouth. I will speak in the anguish of my spirit. I will complain in the bitterness, you hear in these terms, of my soul. In the bitterness of my soul. See, we can become depressed when we lose hope. Hmm? We can become depressed when we lose hope. Have any of us ever, ever, I just want to make sure I'm in a room. Have any of us ever lost hope in something? When we see no end in sight to our problem, our thoughts of just giving up will surface. Okay, y'all acting like y'all ain't never said. Whoever said, what's the use? I told you, I'm going to come in your living room today. Whoever said, what's the use? What's the use to trying? It ain't working out anyway. I'm, I'm, I'm about to mess up. What, what's the use to being a good, a, a good wife? They ain't acting right anyway. Mm. <laughs> Ooh. I might as well just go ahead and do my thing. Somebody say it's a delusion. It's a delusion. It comes from the father of lies. Somebody yell real loud and say, it's a, trick. it's a trick. Lord, get me out of these folks' houses, please. Tell them again, it's a trick. It's a trick. Tell them, don't do it. Don't do it. Wait a minute. Come to the light. <laughs> Caroline, come to the light. It's a trick of the enemy. It's a trick of the enemy. It's a tool that he uses. It's a tool that the enemy uses, people of God. This is what he uses to promote hopelessness for in your life. He wants you to believe that God in Jesus Christ is not enough. That's what he wants you to think. He wants you to think that God in Christ is, is not enough, that you need more than just Jesus. Oh, God. Ooh. I can prove it. I can prove it. So he, he wants you to think you need more than just Jesus. I know some of y'all, when I use that, that last scenario, you're like, oh, I'm glad that ain't me. But you spend all of your money trying to impress folks that you really don't even like. And they don't like you. <laughs> you know you can't afford that. You know you can't afford that. You'd be paying for it three times over so you use your credit card. The credit card that you got with that crazy interest on it. You know that one when the bill come in, you go, ooh. Or thank you, girl. Or you go to that quick loan around the corner on Timberland. All right, I leave y'all alone. I leave y'all alone. I leave y'all alone. I leave y'all alone. alone. All right, just say, Bishop, get out of my business. Oh, I got a good, Lord, Lord Jesus. Or you take the car that you already got your title and you go get money for the title of your car, then you got to keep. Title loan. Somebody say it's a trick. So, <laughs> so it's, it's. It's a trick. This is how the enemy. This is how the enemy sets us up. 
He, he, he attacks our emotions. It, it, you know, so, so, so we have, you know, something happens in our life and he used that thing that happened, that trauma uh, that happened in our life to, and, and, and when, so here's what trauma does. Trauma shocks us and when it shocks us, it leaves a void. So here's what the enemy does. The enemy sees the void and he attacks where the void is. Because where there's a void, there's a need. Okay. okay. All right. So we're, talking, we're just talking about depression. We all, we've, all, we've all some characteristic of depression. Here we go. Depression we in good time, too. Depression symptoms, here we go, can vary from mild to severe. And, and, and I pray you guys writing this down so you can go home and, and, and we can do our, well, our own wellness check. That's the purpose of this. Let's do a wellness check. All right. So, so it, it includes prolonged reap crying. Anybody ever found themselves crying for long periods of time for just, or here we go, it ain't got to be for a long period of time. How many of you, whoever cried for just, it seemed no reason at all. Come on, y'all, come on, come on. And feeling sad for just no reason, just like, where did that come from? Huh? Come on, y'all. Come on. Come on. You better enjoy this one because next week we're talking about anger. God. Tell them, say, let's face it. Because trauma brings out all of this stuff. Okay. Huh, okay, here, here we go. Characteristics, a change in your appetite. Weight loss. You're losing weight all of a sudden because you change your diet drastically. You look in the mirror and say, oh, and you start saying how, how unhappy you are with yourself. And instead of doing something a, a healthy way, because you're judging yourself off of pictures, and pictures you see or from other people, it causes you to feel terrible about yourself and you start doing unhealthy activity. Mm -hmm. Weight loss or gain unrelated to dieting. I hope I'm helping you. Trouble sleeping or sleeping too much. Whew, God. Facial expressions of despondency. In other words, every time you turn around you, or we see you instead of you smiling. What's wrong? Nothing. I'm okay. Fine. Why? Why, why you ask? Because you don't look like you done ate a bunch of sour grapes all the time. But here's the thing, and you don't realize it. You don't realize it. See no meaning or purpose in your life. Anger. Ooh, we're going to talk about anger. Jealousy. We're just talking. We're just talking. Loss of joy in your life. These are these things that depression can cause. Loss of joy. You used to smile all the time. You used to be happy, go lucky. Then after the trauma, mm, he attacked that, 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 that void. And it caused you to be no longer a happy-go-lucky person. It turned you into a what's-the-use person because of the trauma. And we, we talked about that last, uh, two weeks ago. We've all had it. Okay, so, but don't let the trauma have us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Physical exhaustion. You're always just tired. You go, to the, you go to the doctor, they can't find nothing physically wrong. Just feeling worthless. See, all of these things, thoughts of death and suicide, we talked about all of that. We talked about all of that. 
We did. We told you. There's a whole lot of stuff. Here's some. I want to help our young people. I wanted. I did some looking for this one. And and here's some symptoms in ages six to twelve. Y'all ready? Parents, pay attention. Always complaining. Complaints. Having difficulty in school. Listen to how they talk. Or oh, they're always talking about negative statements about themselves. They always fatigue, sleepy, tired, always bored. They have no motivation. Concent concentration has decreased. They worry, they're anxious. When was the last time you sat down and talked to your young person without me and my wife, we, all, we, we share how we had to sit at the table with our kids and uh, they begin to tell us some things. We allow them to talk and they begin to tell us some stuff. And we had to sit there, and I'm going to use this term, and eat it. It hurt because, you know, we think we're super parents. Oh, just us? We don't do anything wrong. But if we be honest with ourselves and we sit down and listen to our children, not all that they say now, let me put that out there, not all that they say. Because some of our kids have tried to use that guilt trip thing and to manipulate. I just want to make sure I kill that right there. But, you know, we have to learn to listen and have discernment. Okay? Here's ages 12 to 18. Here's some symptoms. Suicidal thoughts. Have any of you, who's 12 to 18 here? Anybody? Have you guys ever had suicidal thoughts, if you can be honest? Thank you for being honest. Hopelessness. Can I, you know what? I'm going to use, I'm going to use the scenario. Everybody, everybody, close your eyes. No one open your eyes, please. No one. If any of these, you ever felt any of these symptoms, I just want you to raise your hand. And I want you to be honest. Please be honest with yourself. <sighs> Please be honest. <laughs> Act it out in rage. Raise your hand. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Act it out sexually. Raise your hand. Thank you. Close your eyes, please. Don't nobody need to be nosy. Drugs or alcohol use in your lifetime. Let me do it that way. I ain't talking about since you got saved. Hopelessness. You ever felt hopelessness in your life? I'm talking to the young people too. I ain't talking about just these old, you know. Hmm. You thought about committing homicide. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can put it down. 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 That things got so rough. See, if I, let, if I tell you to open your eyes up right now and, and did that with people looking, you'd be surprised how many people can't point a finger. Now, mind you, some of them lying. And I'm the one that can see it. Because we've all been through something. You've been so angry, keep your eyes closed, that you've been so angry 
you almost acted out and you would have been in jail. Come on. Okay, open your eyes. Open your eyes. If I would have had the camera on y'all, you would be surprised of who can't fake it when they come to church. <laughs> Girl, you'd be surprised who can't fake it, who can't hide behind Christianity. Because we all had trauma. See, we, we, we all, we all, we all, we all had been through something. Close your eyes again. Please be honest. Male or female, please close your eyes. And don't worry, the camera is just on me. It's not on y'all. If you've been violated, raise your hand. Quickly put your hands down. Open your eyes. You'd be surprised who can't point a finger. Somebody say we in this thing together. Okay. I'm no more saved than you. <laughs> oh God if we really honest life punched us all in the gut life punched us all in the gut so how dare we come to the ER and don't think we ain't got nothing wrong with us <laughs> is, everything, is everything all right? We're on good time. Give me about five minutes. And I'll finish this at another time. Here's some Bible examples of people who went through depression. Y'all ready? We read Numbers chapter 11. We read about Moses. This was a great man of God. He served as a leader of Israel. And he went through a whole lot of challenges and situations. He did. He confronted Pharaoh on their behalf. God used him in doing that. He led him through the Red Sea into the wilderness. That was traumatic all by itself. Oh, well, you don't think it was? I dare you to sit at, go, well, out, out at the Atlantic Ocean and, and watch it split in half. Let's see if it'll be that traumatic to you. <laughs> Wait a minute, what's that? What's that lake? Y'all go fishing at? Tommy, if you was fishing and all of a sudden. <laughs> it parted. <laughs> Shoot. Come on now. Well, he, he was the man of God. He trusted God. He was human too. I can't imagine I'm sitting on the rock and the Lord says, stretch forth your hand. First of all, you, you already seen some of the stuff he done did before, so you don't know what he's going to do right now. You sitting on the rock. You know it's going to be something, so you really do got to prepare yourself like stretch forth your hand and all of a sudden you start seeing the water going oh wait a minute God what you doing and watch this and then he tells you now walk across the dry what 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 watch this walking across and you walking and you don't know when that water coming down could you imagine Let alone you being chased. So could you imagine the trauma just in that? <laughs> could you imagine the trauma of when him throwing his staff down and turns into a snake? And then God said, pick it up by the tail. Um, excuse me? 
Y'all act like y'all be so, yes, Lord. And I'm like, what, huh, what? Yeah. <laughs> Who? Ah, I can say, Aaron, could you pick that up for me? See, trauma, could you imagine? Could you imagine? So he, he went through some stuff. He wanted to lead them to the promised land. His trauma, I see it, but I can't go in it. Mm. He became discouraged because of the murmuring of the people because God gave him water, God gave him manna, and the people complained about the manna and wanted meat. Yep. Ned Jokers wasn't satisfied. No. So what happened? Moses became discouraged. That the signs of depression became so obvious in his conduct. Watch your conduct. Amen. Numbers chapter 11, verse 14, 15, it says, he said, I can't carry all these people by myself. They're too much for me. If you're going to treat me like this, please just kill me. Please just do it right now. How many of y'all ever got so frustrated and so depressed and say, God, kill me now, please? Lord, take me. What does God do? God intervened and he helped Moses by giving him 70 men to help him. King Saul. Saul. He had it going off for him until he rebelled against God. Because of his actions, he was rejected from, from reigning over Israel and he went into depression. There's many, y'all. There's many. There's many. Elijah. After that great, great victory, then he being threatened, he going to run up under a tree. <laughs> Jonah, there's a whole lot, y'all, of people. I'm going to finish. Here's one. Watch this. Judas Iscariot. Who remember Judas Iscariot? Who don't know who Judas Iscariot is? Okay. Judas. You know that one who betrayed Jesus? For 30 pieces of silk. And he wasn't able to make it right when he realized he was condemned to innocent man. And when he tried to go take the money back, they're like, we ain't got nothing to do with that. That's your money now. So what did he do? He hung himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. How many of you know about the distant disciple? Who, how many of you know who the distant disciple is? And I'm, I, I, I helped you in a few minutes. Yeah, I called him the distant disciple. I did a message a couple years ago about the distant disciple, and I asked the question, are you a distant disciple? Who was it? It was Peter. What are you talking about, Bishop? Here we go. I'll never leave you. I don't know what they going to do, but I ain't going to never leave you. They come and arrest Jesus? You know? But as they was taking him to court, watch this. As they was taking him to court, he in the courtroom. I got to use them terminology. He in the courtroom, watching the trial. Ain't you one of them? No. No, they ain't me. They ain't me. They, no, they, mm -mm. you sound just like them. I said, bleep, bleep, bleep. <laughs> I said I'm 
me, you look just like them. You got their clothes on. You sound just like See? And what did he do? See, life. I hope this is helping you. I know it sounds funny, but I really hope it's helping. See? All types of stuff. Good timing. I'm about done. I'm done. Depression is not the exclusive territory of the spiritually weak. In other words, I don't care how strong you think you are, it will attack you too. All through scripture, the pages of God's word reveals that it was, it was a frequent experience among a lot of God's leaders. A lot of God's leaders. So if God's leaders uh, uh, have, have, have experienced depression. What makes you think you're different? Here's some solutions. Let me jump to that. So to properly for us to be able to win over uh, in depression, we must be able to respond positively, positively to circumstances and things which may cause depression. So here's one. Here, let me help you. Let me help you. I want you to write this down. Don't be afraid or ashamed to acknowledge that you're depressed. Don't lie to yourself and say I'm okay when you're not okay. Because depression happens to all of us. It happens to all of us. It does. One time or another, if it had not happened yet, it's going to happen. And then take a few minutes to ask yourself, why am I depressed? Ask yourself, why am I depressed? Number two, never forget that God will help you win over depression. Invite him into your situation. Into that situation that is depressing you. Why? Because he really do care for us. He really do care for us. He really does. Number three, I'm going to end this here. Admit your weaknesses to God. Pray specifically about your weaknesses. You ain't strong as you think. God answers prayers. Number four, change your routine. Take a vacation. I might hurt somebody in the next one. Take another job. Because the job that you have, you're depressed more than anything because of it. Yell across the room, say, get some rest. Have a physical checkup. Go to the doctor. Ask your physician about the medications that you want if you think that's what's doing it. If you have become inactive, watch this, get active. How many of us used to be active in some form or way? Watch this. How many of us used to be active and we got a gym membership? See, Diggle, your answer right there, you, you know. Watch this. Remember this. This too shall. Oh, God. Next one. Have somebody you can talk to, y'all. Galatians chapter 6, verse 2 says this. Bear ye one another's burdens... And so fulfill the law of Christ. You're not in this by yourself. You don't have to be. Always remember that God loves you. Even when it feels like he doesn't, he does. He does. 
Try to get rid, try to get rid of that negativity in your life. Get rid of your self-defeating beliefs. What are you talking about? Stop telling yourself you're ugly. Stop telling yourself you're fat. Stop telling yourself you're nobody. Stop telling yourself all of the negative things you keep telling yourself and start speaking positive in your life. You are who you say you are. Stop, stop, stop living your life what other people have said about you. Well, I am overweight. Well, do something about it. Make your overweight look good. Come on. I'm about to help y'all real good. Well, my hair keep falling out. Weave it, wig it. If you can't do it, she said, if you can't do it, glue it. <laughs> Men, if your six pack is gone, go back to the gym and get it. Yeah. Woo. If you lose a job, tell yourself, there's another one. Especially now, everybody's hiring, but nobody want to work. Here, I'm almost done. This is good. Try not to make any major decisions when you're depressed. Try not to make any major decisions when, when you're depressed. For example, many people decide to end their marriage when they're depressed. And there's really nothing wrong with their marriage. It's them. And here's, a, I'm, I'm going to stop here. Oh, I got a couple. Don't blame others for your depression. You're responsible for what you think. All right. I got too much. 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 Last scripture, 2 Corinthians 3 5. 2 Corinthians 3 5. Here's what it says. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything of as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. I want you to remember this. Our sufficiency is of God. What does that mean? God is enough. God is enough. Last words, God is enough, but we here on earth. Am I right? <laughs> so because we're here on earth and we're here because mankind, I want you to remember this. It's all right to get counseling. Yes, we go to God in prayer, but God uses man. He uses doctors. He uses counselors. I'm about, to, I'm, about to, I'm about to say something that's controversial. You're not going to find all of your answers in church. <laughs> You're not going to get all of your answers in church. The preacher can't give you all of your answers. We talk to you spiritually. But when anything mentally, you need to go to somebody who specializes. Yes, talk to the Lord in prayer, but go see a psychiatrist. It don't make you less saved. It don't make you less anointed. Because watch this. If you got a toothache, who do you go see? No, if you got a toothache, you go to the preacher, you go to the church, and you tell them to lay hands on your mouth, And you're going to trust God enough and you ain't going to go. While you got an abscess in your mouth, watch this. 
with dental insurance. Everybody understand? Okay. We yell across the room again and say, let's face it. Come on, put your hands together. My prayer is that you paid attention. I know we had some good laughing. I wanted to use scripture, but I also wanted to give you knowledge um, that we need. Because, uh, yes, yes, we have a lot of examples in the Bible. And it shows how God did what he did. And God can and will if he choose to. God can do it instantly if he choose to. But there's also tools for us, people of God, that we don't have to walk around depressed. Talk to somebody. You can go ahead and play that Z if you remember what it is. Talk to somebody. Tell somebody. Say, talk to somebody. Come out of your, not real low, come out of your closet Put the blinds up in your house. Let the light shine in your house. Okay? That's my prayer. Because we all been through something, y'all. And, 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 and it is good to have a good message to make you make you want to shout. But why shout when you still jacked up? Let's face what we're going through and be afraid to face it. Is that all right? Father, thank you for those that are here today, those that was watching on social media. My prayer, God, is that you've touched all of our hearts and that we receive what you said because we're all hurting in some form or another. But we trust you, God, that you are enough for us because we do know that you can do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ever ask or think and no matter what we are going through you're the answer for those of us God that may be dealing with depression God we ask I ask dear God that you touch us where we hurt the most strengthen us God spiritually but God but also help us to go get some help physically we know you're God and we know you're the answer to all prayers so we thank you for those God that have been contemplating suicide Lord I ask you to remove the thought now in Jesus name we give you glory God we give you praise those that have been telling themselves that they're nothing. I speak into their spirit that they are somebody. I speak into their spirit that they shall live and they shall not die. Those that are even watching on social media that you are who God says you are. And we'll stop listening to the negative thoughts that we keep telling ourselves. That we can't do, but we can do all things through Christ. That strengthens us. Lord, we give you glory. We give you honor in Jesus' name. If you are not saved, if you have not invited Jesus Christ in your life, whether you're in this room or you're watching, we invite you to trust Jesus as your Savior and to make him your Lord of your life. Let's make sure that your soul is secure in him. Does that mean everything is going to be perfect? No. But that does mean if you die today, if he repossesses his breath today, you do have a place with him in glory. If that's you in this room, I want you to just stand up on your feet if you want to be saved. If that's you on social media, I encourage you to follow my voice and I want you to repeat after me and say, Father, I'm a sinner needing to be saved. Forgive me. Come into my life. Be in my heart. I invite you in my heart. Be my Savior as I make you my Lord. I thank you for dying on the cross for my sins that I may be saved. I thank you for taking the stripes for me. 
I thank you for taking the crown of thorns for me. I thank you for being nailed on the cross for me. But I also thank you for rising on the third day. Because you've done that, God, your word says that I'm saved, and I thank you for salvation. I thank you for saving me. If you have done that, whether you're in this room, I want you to come and let us know. But if you're watching on social media, I want you to email us at where the presence of God dwells at gmail.com and say, Bishop, that message touched my life. I got healed. But most of all, I got saved. We'll send you some information that not only are going to help you in your salvation, but it'll still help you in your depression. If that's you, contact us now. God bless you. Come on, put your hands together.